The UFC's featherweight division has always been ruled by one of the top pound-for-pound -pound fighters, and the champion has always been notoriously difficult to topple. First, it was Jose Aldo's five-year reign. Then Max Holloway took the succession. And ever since Alex Volkanovsky came to power, the featherweight belt has looked even more impossible to win by anyone else. But a worthy challenger may have finally come along, and his name is Ilya Taporia. A Georgian born in Germany and making his home in Spain, Taporia is one of the ruthless assassins in the cage that you know were born for this. One of those people who just know deep inside what they want from life and will pursue it with a laser focus. Taporia is an unforgiving submission specialist with punching prowess and power to render lifeless rag dolls with a single punch, as well as a man with a sleek and classy model appearance. True champion potential. While it remains to be seen if he can materialize it, his road to title contention is worth exploring by every fight fan. Taporia was born in 1997 in Hall, Germany, to Georgian parents. He and his brother Alex, who is also a prominent mixed martial artist, started their martial arts journey with Greco-Roman wrestling at a very young age, and continued the practice when they relocated to their parents' homeland when Ilya was seven. At the age of 15, the family once again relocated, this time to Alicante, Spain, where Taporia heard the unequivocal call from destiny to become a warrior. He and his brother even dropped out of school to focus solely on fighting with the goal of becoming UFC fighters, a decision that was thankfully approved by their father, who recognized his son's passion and true calling. Dead set on realizing his dream, Ilya took part in all the regional competitions he could, but also had to work multiple jobs to pay the entry fees and travel costs. As a cashier in a clothing shop, as a grappling instructor, and as security on the weekends. But the hard work definitely paid off, just like it always does. At age 18, Taporia debuted on the regional scene with great success. He is known mostly as a destructive puncher in the UFC, but in fact, he is as good, if not better on the ground, and his debut ended with a submission in the first round. In fact, Taporia won all his first seven fights by way of submission. And in 2018, he and his brother became the first Georgian-Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belts. Quickly outgrowing the level of local competition in Spain, Ilya was invited to fight in one of the bigger European organizations, the Finland-based Cage. The perceived step up in competition did not change the final result, and Ilya guillotined his opponent in the first round. En tiedä, oleks se vaan minä, mutta alkaks... Näkö jää? Oi, oi, oi. No niin, ja siitä lähtee. Onko hyvä? Tätä on paljon puhuttu, että rakenteelta on sellainen kaveri, että... Stop! Mutta sieltä se vaan... Sieltä. Mutta... Nyt on tullut paremmin. The Matadors World Tour brought him to Belgium, Colombia, and Bahrain to fight for Cage Warriors and Brave FC, respectively. And all three fights ended in first round finishes. Inevitably grabbing the attention of UFC scouts. The call from the world's top MMA organization came in 2020, and Taporia did not hesitate to step up on short notice and face Yusef Zalal in Abu Dhabi. Ilya had to hear the judges' scorecards for the first time in his professional career, but instead of diminishing his hype, the three rounds allowed him to demonstrate the full spectrum of his mixed martial arts skills. For his second fight, Ilya had a full camp and made good on his promise that with full preparation, he could make every fight look easy. His opponent, Damon Jackson, is a seasoned veteran of the game, but instead of being the matador, Taporia played the bull and pursued Jackson for half a round before folding him like a lawn chair with a single clean overhand right. Next in line was Ryan Hall, who was the most avoided fighter in the division at the time. The grappling wizard employs the exact fighting style that many jiu-jitsu practitioners are often mocked for being completely unrealistic and unusable in a fight. But Hall somehow made it work, until he met El Matador. After an almost full round of ridiculousness, Hall finally got what many people believe was a long time coming a brutal ground-and-pound knockout. 
With two signature knockouts like this, and rapidly improving English, Teporia quickly started to gain the attention of the MMA crowd. As you know, there is no bad publicity, and aside from being interviewed a lot more, Ilya also got into a scuffle with Patty Pimblett in the Fighter Hotel a couple of days before their respective fights in London. Regardless of the noise, Ilya had a tall task ahead of him, both literally and figuratively. The fight was a one-off stint at lightweight against the former six-foot-one Cage Warriors lightweight champion and a crowd favorite, Jai Herbert. The reach and size advantage of Jai was obvious and caused Toporia serious trouble early on. Less than a minute in the first round, Herbert landed a beautiful head kick, which sent Ilya to the canvas, but his instincts and heart helped him survive the most difficult round of his career. The second round started as things were looking most beautiful, devastating right hands in recent years, and left Herbert unconscious on the canvas and the O2 arena in silence. Already inside the featherweight top 15, Teporia was scheduled to fight fellow undefeated prospect Bryce Mitchell. The Arkansas native may be many things outside of the cage, but regardless of what you think of him, once the first bell rings, he possesses one of the most suffocatingly dominant styles in MMA. None of his tricks would work against Teporia, though, and the Georgian stuffed takedown attempt after takedown attempt and landed heavy leather on Mitchell. The damage took its toll, and halfway through the second, Ilya locked in a tight arm trying mission win. If anyone still needed any more proof Teporia belonged at the top of the division, he provided it against the number five ranked Josh Emmett. For five rounds, Teporia delivered a ruthless but methodical and calculated beatdown over the gusty Emmett, which resulted in a decision as lopsided as we've seen, with one scorecard being 50 42 in favor of Teporia. Ilya El Matador Teporia has all the makings of a champion. At only 26 years of age, he is dedicated and already has elite skills in all domains. All the while, being blessed with power not common at featherweight. On top of that, he has done a lot of work to also become a marketable fighter, something the UFC has always preferred. But for his first attempt at UFC gold, he has to go through a man who's already proven to be perhaps the most well-rounded fighter a pound-for-pound pound great, and a certain Hall of Famer in Alex Volkanovsky. Regardless of whether Teporia can ascend the throne on his first try or not, he has the potential to write his name alongside the great featherweight champions.